In today's video, I'll be analysing my recent game against a player rated almost 2200 ELO, which is practically FIDE master level. This is an over the board classical game with 80 minutes per player plus 10 seconds bonus time after every move. Uh, I was playing the white pieces and considering my opponent's rating, I decided that if I played too solidly, then he'd slowly outplay me and show why he's higher rated than me. <clears throat> So I decided the best strategy was just try to get aggressive and throw him off his game early on and hope for a mistake. So I play e4 and he goes for the Sicilian defense and I play this gambit line. Uh, my opponent plays e6, which is, you know, a principled response. And I go for b4, trying to gambit this pawn for this massive center and I'm, hope, I'm hoping for a position like this where I can start to get my queen out and put pressure, get my bishops don't move like that, get my bishop out, maybe throw the f-pawn down the board. This is what I was hoping for, right? After the game, I spoke to my opponent and asked him why he didn't accept the gambit, and he said that he had no idea, like he'd never seen this before, and there was no way he was letting me play like right into my prep, which, yeah, I don't blame him. So he goes for d5, and here I knew the best move was to take. I, I knew. And after something like e takes, I'd play something like bishop b5, check, get the knight out, maybe f3, maybe give a check with the queen. But I thought that that position would suit him more than me because I don't I don't want to open the board up and make it so that there's loads of calculations where he's going to outplay me. So I played what I knew wasn't the best move, but what I thought made the most practical sense and played e5 because I really want to get a structure with the f4 d pawn supporting the e pawn and still i want this same position as before right i want to transpose into that but again my opponent refuses and plays knight c6 i play f4 the computer doesn't like it but again i want this right so i'm, I'm more than happy to give up the pawn i don't care I, that's what I wanted to do from the start. I just want to get this structure that I know well, I know where my pieces belong, and I can take the game to my opponent. After f4, he goes f6, just challenging my pawn. And as soon as he played this, I knew it was a mistake, and I think he knew it was a mistake as well. It, it, he, he doesn't lose the game or anything. Obviously, he's threatening to take my pawn because uh, he's got two attackers, and I don't want to take him because after queen f6, he attacks the rook. Oh my god, he attacks the rook, and I mean, I've got no pieces out, right? I can't take him. So I play b5, attacking the knight. Now, the computer wants knight f3. Why didn't I like that? I actually don't know. Oh, no, I can tell you why. I didn't play knight f3 because it blocked off my queen. And in these positions, I like to get my queen out to g4 or h5 before I block it in with the knight. So that's why I didn't do that. So instead, I pushed b5, forced the knight back, and played bishop d3, which... I mean, say he plays a nothing move, I'm threatening queen e check, and he can't play g6 because of takes, 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 right? Obviously, he's going to see my threat. Um, yeah, so obviously he sees the threat, and he plays f5. Now, I was expecting g6, and I was thinking about throwing the h-pawn down the board. Um, 
or maybe just play knight f3, something like that, right? But I just wanted to pose him a problem with this move bishop d3 and hope he messes up. And f5 isn't a great move because this pawn is unassailable and it's really cramping up black's position, right? I go c3, which the computer hates. The computer really wants bishop to b2 or knight to f3 or a4, right? But I played c3 because I was expecting c4 and I was initially planning to drop my bishop back to c2. But when c4 got played, I went, ah, I really don't want to put my bishop here because it's really out of the game. And maybe I should have done that. But I brought it back to e2. And the logic was that I keep my queen open on this diagonal and I don't block it off. And I also just keep an eye on these light squares with the bishop. You know, some poor decision making from me maybe, but I'm under a lot of pressure in this game considering how good my opponent is. So he plays queen b6, attacking the pawn. I play a4, defending the pawn. And he plays a6, attacking the pawn. Computer wants knight here. But I didn't understand what to do <clears throat> after bishop takes, because I, I no longer defend the pawn. The computer here wants bishop h5 check, g6, bishop here, and after a takes b5, no, not, sorry, it wants to take back, and after queen takes, bishop e2, and if he takes, then queen takes, and apparently I'm mating him. That's ridiculous. I'm never ever going to see that, ever. So I play the logical b takes a6, just getting my weakness off the board. He plays knight takes, I go knight f3. He goes knight c5, looking at all my really weak light squares and the weak pawn on a4. And here, um, I really start to panic. And I'm like, oh, have I have I messed this up? Like, have I messed this up beyond repair? So I think quite a while, and I go bishop a3, which does block the rook's defense, the pawn. But after rook takes a4, I have bishop takes c5, attacking the queen and the rook, right? So we can't do it with the rook. If he takes with the knight, I was going to play bishop takes, king takes, and rook takes, and rook takes, and king takes, and queen takes, and bishop d1. And here, I thought I've got enough activity. I'm going to castle, and I'm down a pawn. But he's going to struggle to get his pieces out, and I'm not going to struggle so much. So that's why I play bishop a3, which I thought was a great move. He goes bishop d7, just attacking the pawn. It's logical, right? I go knight to d4, because I simply don't know what to do. The computer wants a rook a2. I seem to play rook b2, which is smart, but something I'm never ever going to see. I go knight d4, right? And my logic is, if bishop takes here, again, I have bishop takes c5, and after the capture, we have this same line again, right? But in this situation, this comes with a check, so he doesn't have time to take the knight, because previously my bishop took on f8 and the king had moved out of the way. So he can't really take with the bishop. Okay, so what if he takes with the knight? Here, bishop takes, king takes. 
and I'm kind of I I spoke to him after the game about this line. I was like, why didn't you go for this line? And he was saying that, and I this is what I was going for. It was like the pin here. I thought that it was quite strong, and he agreed with me. And I'm not winning this night back because I can't attack it very easily. But maybe I've got ideas of I don't know G4 or something, like while keeping his pieces tight down on the queen side. So, knight takes isn't easy. If rook takes, again, this line, I attack the queen, open up the rook's attack on the on the rook, so he, he can't do that. So that's why I play knight d4. Here my opponent plays knight b3, which I was really hoping for, and I'm able to play bishop takes f8, which the computer gives a brilliant move because my rook's under attack. But if he takes my rook, I can play bishop takes g7 and his rook's trapped. <laughs> right? So <laughs> so he can't do that. He can't take my rook. So he has to take the bishop. Then I trade the knights. And here, an important move, a5 because my pawn's under attack, and this queen's defending the pawn from my queen. But once I play a5, um, if rook takes, rook takes, queen takes, queen takes, I've got a bit of an advantage, because his king can't castle, and his knight's going to struggle a bit to get out, and this pawn looks a little bit weak. But my opponent is t rated 2200, so he plays b2, because if I take the queen... Then he takes here with check and he's up a rook because he just promoted to a new a new queen. So here the computer wants rook to a3. I play rook to a2, which he doesn't really like. But after rook takes, rook takes, queen takes, queen b3, the reason he doesn't like it is because of queen a1, which I saw. And I thought I'm going to castle. And I'm going to move this knight away with a discovered attack. And I'm good. The computer gives knight here. And queen takes. And says it's equal. So I don't really know why it disagreed with my whole rook a2 idea. But anyway, Stockfish is going to say... Say whatever it wants, right? I I can't question it. So he puts bishop c6, I take the pawn, knight e7, castle, king f7, getting the rook out, knight a3, rook a8. I go rook a1, which the computer doesn't like. But in my head, I'm playing a 2200 rated player. I'm happy with a draw. So if I can trade all the pieces along the a file, I'm good. So he goes knight c8, which sets up this. So you might be thinking that the queen and the rook are skewered, but he has queen to b6 check. Queen takes, rook takes a1 check first, knight takes, and knight takes. So we get into this position where it's knight and bishop versus knight and bishop with six pawns each. My structure's a bit better than his, but the B pawn could be an asset because it's just like outside. Here I need to play knight B3. And I need to head for the D4 square. But I play King F2. And can whoever's what to you who's watching the video, can you see the move for black here that poses problems for me? Well, the move is bishop a4, and the knight can't get out. And this is tough, because I need to get my knight out. So I play king e1, preparing bishop d1 to trade the bishops off, and then get my knight out. And he goes knight c4, and... 
I go bishop d1, he goes b5. If I take, take, knight c2, I'm worried about a3. And here I've got to be really accurate to survive this. I've got to play d3, knight b2. And I can't even take because I get forked. I have to play king d2. And after a2, I have to play... Well, I, I've got a few moves, but really I've got to play g3. I don't want to allow this, right? Obviously. So instead of taking, I decide to play knight to c2. Trying to get my knight out, which was the point of bishop d1. He goes knight b2. And this is tough. Because he's attacking my bishop. If I move the knight to defend my bishop, then my opponent has knight to d3 check, and he wins the f4 pawn, like we said before. So I can't move the knight, right? Even if I move the knight and defend the bishop, because if I move the knight somewhere like here, I just lose the bishop. So I can't move the knight. I play the best move, g3, which defends the pawn. So, say, we get into the same line as before, I'm good. Because there's no, there's no take there. He can go back and check me, and I'm happy with this, right? I'm, I'm, I'm happy to take a draw. So he goes king g6, I play knight e3, we trade all the pieces. He goes king h5, and here, white has one move. To survive. And I saw this move. H3. But I was worried about G5. And white has to take it. Go here. And here I was worried about F4. Because I'm losing all my pawns. But here I have G4. And the king is cut off from entry. If he goes here, I can move the king up, and takes, takes, I'm actually better. I didn't see that far ahead. I play king e2, which is losing to king g4, and I can't stop him from getting to the pawn. So, instead of playing king f2 and allowing the king in, I decide to play king to e3. And this is what I'd calculated. I'd calculated all this. Bang, 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 bang. There. No, sorry. Not king takes, uh, because then the promotion comes with check. King here. Then there, there, there. Queen, queen. And I'd calculated this, and I decided... My king's attacking here, my queen's attacking here. Black can only check me on h6, and then I take the pawn. And I think I can survive this, because I think I can check him enough, or win this pawn and march my pawn up the board. So that's what I'd calculated, and the computer says it's losing. But you have to calculate about 10 moves like for each player, so 20 moves in total, and then see this position, and then you've got to decide, do I want this or not, as black? And that's so tough. My opponent decided against it and played g5. <laughs> and let me tell you, I breathed a huge sigh of relief. I happily took, played king f3, no longer can the black king get in. h6, d4, just shutting everything down on the queen side. Because there were ideas of d4. Because if I take it, then he can march this pawn down. Although I think I catch it. But I was a little bit worried about that. So I play d4, king g6, king f4, king h5, h4. And here, we just dance around a little bit. 
and we agree to a draw. So I just drew to a player rated 2180. And yeah, I was pretty much over the moon. Like, that's a great result. Not only do I get a good bit of elo from that, but I kind of proved to myself that I can play against those players. Like, you know, in this position, it's not easy. And I knew that my position was worse, but I just kept going. I find bishop takes f8, and somehow I'm able to just liquidate the position. I don't play it perfectly, really don't play it perfectly, but I keep fighting, and I manage to come up with this idea of king e3 marching around which my opponent did not see, and he took so long in this position. And, and I, I managed to win. Sorry, not win, draw. Um, so yeah, I was really happy with this game. Hopefully it teaches you guys something. <laughs> I don't know if you guys enjoy this type of deep analysis video, but I know I do, and I don't find many of them on YouTube, to be honest. Hence why I'm making the video. And if you enjoy, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.